The story of the Ottawa Senators over the past 11 months is a tragic one, let's be honest. Again, for Sens fans, I'm sorry. I don't keep I don't mean to keep twisting the knife. I'm not meaning to beat a dead horse here. But it has to be said. One goal away from the 2017 Stanley Cup final to where they are now in April of 2018 outside of the playoff structure, apparently directionless with an owner who simply doesn't care how else can you voice it a GM in Pierre Dorian who is either incompetent at his job or is just a puppet to Eugene Melnick who again just doesn't care and that brings us to this series where you guys have voted what team am I going to use next what team am I going to use next for my new straightforward series as we call it the no gimmick series for the most part no fantasy drafts no only taking players of this player type or from this nation straightforward i have full control of the team i can do what i want to do you guys voted for me to take control of the ottawa senators to avoid the iceberg in this situation the iceberg in which would be probably eric carlson leaving ottawa and the team moving to hamilton or quebec It's my job now to do what Eugene Melnick doesn't care to do and what Pierre Dorian either cannot do or is not being allowed to do, and that is to give this team a new direction and to fix this franchise. Can I do that? That's a whole nother question. Because in NHL 18, I have had some mixed success. And this may be even over a draft to glory series this may be my most difficult challenge now i'll say this right off the top because there there's been some debate in the past as far as what rules should be in place as far as how i approach this type of series in terms of free agent signings trading drafting and all that i'm going to say this right off the top There are no set rules for this series, but at the end of the day, I am going to play through this mode in the way that, not only only in the way that I want, but it is in that way that I feel like it makes it more interesting. I'm not going to set a limit on how many free agents I can sign, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go with my gut. If I feel like at the end of the first season, that John Tavares, for for example, if he hits the free agent market, if I feel like in real life that John Tavares would not sign with the Ottawa Senators in their current state, I'm not going to sign John Tavares. If the AI GMs don't figure out how to manage the influx of prospects that they have and a bunch of them get dumped to the free agent list, I might sign most of them, I might sign all of them, I might only sign a couple of them. I'm just going to go with my gut on this series. The term realistic has been thrown around far too often, and I know you've been looking at the same screen for three minutes now, and I'm sorry. The term realistic is thrown around often. That's why I use the term straightforward now, because realism in NHL 18 is a pipe dream. There is no such thing. It's only best wishing. You can set up the AI with a ton of good prospects they add into the game, much like I did. Check out the roster editing extravaganza video that I put up where you can see just how many players we added in, how many overalls and potentials we updated, for better or worse in some people's opinions. You can check out all of that. I lost my train of thought. Realism is a pipe dream. That's all you need to know. So I don't like to use that term anymore because, again, The Tyler Sagan trade in real life is my primary example. Would that have been a realistic trade within NHL 18? Absolutely not. So realism, as far as what would actually happen in real life, you can't say that for sure. So I don't like using that term. I like using the term straightforward. And to me, that means no gimmicks, but I am going to play through this mode the way I care to play through it. So that brings us to our starting team. Now, obviously... There are some changes with the squad. I am going to be running the second line of Gabrick, Paggio, and Ryan. We're going to keep Hoffman, Duchesne, and Stone on the top line to start just to see if they can actually spread the wealth around a little bit. Colin White, yes, he has a reduced overall, but again, as I have explained, 
EA overrated some players at the start of the year, whether players like Colin White, Prospects, uh, Montana Onyebuchi is the main one that comes to mind for me. They just kind of assumed, hey, this player will do really well, and this guy will be drafted highly in the upcoming draft. Doesn't always work out that way. I am also going to be running Logan Brown on the fourth line to start this year. Little bits of a youth movement, and that continues over on the defense, where Thomas Shabbat will be playing with Eric Carlson. Clayson and CC make up the second pairing, but Christian Molanen, who was an NCAA signing by the Sens, will be on the third pairing with Chris Weidman. The goaltending is, of course, the same. Now, I've said this before, not a big fan of having a certain someone on one of my teams. However, when I say I'm going to play this mode the way I want to play it, there is one common thing that a lot of people do. Uh, you'll notice, aside from Max Reinhardt, by the way, uh, most of our prospects here are up on the second pairing. Hopefully, Aaron Luchik can develop well. Same thing on defense here. Uh, Mark Borowiecki down on the third pairing at the AHL ever, uh, level. And then we got Chris Dreger and Philip Gustafson in goal. The main thing most people do, or that a lot of people do, when they start a new franchise mode, number one, you check the free agent list. Unfortunately, there really isn't anybody there unless I wanted to bring in Jerome McGinley. Problem is, we're at 50 contracts, so that's not going to happen, and there aren't any prospects to sign. But the main thing, the second thing that people do, and probably the main thing, is you immediately, or at least very quickly, trade away a lot of the garbage players, if not most of them. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to lie. I could easily do that. Burroughs might be more difficult, but Sexton, McCormick, Blundin, Bergdorfer, Randall, Reinhardt. Of course, I could find teams like Chicago, Colorado, Dallas, Florida. Teams with roster spots and cap space that would be willing to take these players for all of the picks. All of them, and we could pick Horde immediately. I just don't feel like doing that. I don't have much fun in doing that. I like keeping the roster pretty much the same, at least to start off, even if we're in kind of a rough spot where we don't have a second and third round pick, and we only have the Penguins' first round pick, and of course, the Penguins will probably be pretty good. So, you know, we're not really going to do a whole hell of a lot with this team. Really, I don't plan on doing anything. I don't really like the idea of immediately trying to trade for Troy Terry, for Sam Steele, and Max Jones. I like keeping the roster the same. I like seeing how the AI approaches it. And also, I like seeing how our team will actually do at the start of a sim. Because more often than not, more often than not, the team overperforms when you really wouldn't expect them to. When you're a rebuilder, it's either you're really, really bad, or somehow you are magically a playoff team. And that could still happen for us. However, the one thing I am going to do here with the trade block is I am going to field offers for Eric Carlson. Just to see, right? Just to see what offers we get. Do I plan on accepting any trades? Maybe. Maybe not. It depends on the offers that we get. As we move closer to the deadline, I will absolutely start to take a look at maybe moving out players like a Marion Gabarik, like an Alex Burroughs, guys that we really don't exactly need. Now, I will say, as well as far as the settings go, injuries are currently off, and that has been one topic of debate in basically every series that I've ever run. Whether or not they should be on or off, turn them on for just the playoffs. I want your opinion on that as well, because the, one of the major factors here, if we have injuries off, is that we do have players that I have gone through and edited and lowered their durability. Marion Gabrick, for one, who has a 65 for durability, he's still a decent player in real life, but the problem is he's 35 years old and he can't stay healthy. If injuries are off, that doesn't really factor in, so Gabrick does become more of an asset to us uh, than he may be to the Sens in real life. Uh, of course, that's, that's still an interesting trade to me, the Dion Phaneuf. Marion Gabarik deal, but that is a discussion for a different time. So aside from letting me know what your opinion happens to be as far as injuries are concerned, we're pretty much good to go. Trade difficulties on hard, I'm going to let the AI take care of the scouting because does it really matter? 
I don't think it does. And we're good to go. This roster is set. How good will the Ottawa Senators be? We are listed as rebuilders. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm intrigued to see what our overall ratings are, especially with this slightly weaker lineup. Running rookies like Wolanin, like Logan Brown, and Colin White. 89 offense, 90 defense, 87 goaltending, which I still don't quite understand how it uh, decides what overall ratings are. To me, the obvious thing uh, would be to have it tally up the overalls of all 12 of your forwards and divide that number by 12. There's your overall rating, your average rating. That's not what it is, though. So, I don't know. I've always been off-put by that and just kind of puzzled. But it's the way that it is. As the preseason comes to a close, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to try, especially early on here, as Carlson had six points in seven games, I am going to try my best to keep up with following the AI signings and the trades, if there are any, which they haven't been early on. Uh, Dennis Rasmussen to Montreal, as well as R.J. Umberger. Brooks like to Florida. Colorado signs Ryan White. And that is that. So nobody signed Jerome McGinley, which I feel pretty bad about, in fairness. But let's get this show on the road. There's really nothing I can afford to do to help Iggy. Now, I will say, with all of that out of the way, welcome to the start of this series. It was a very, very close vote between Winnipeg and Ottawa. We were going with the Canadian team, but at the time that I checked, I still think it's the case, but I'm not entirely sure. The Ottawa Senators did win, which is not really what I was expecting. So I am excited to see how this series goes. This is, of course, the second series I have done this year controlling a Canadian team in the Atlantic Division. Of course, we ran a series with the Montreal Canadiens, earlier this year. If you haven't checked that out, I recommend you check it out. It's an interesting series for numerous reasons, as we have a 6-6 six and six record to begin the year. So I, I definitely didn't expect us to be jumping right back into it with another team in the same division, but you voted. You voted. And maybe, just maybe, Winnipeg will be the next team. I could easily see that being the case as, again, we are currently just outside of a playoff spot, but it's way too early to tell how this season is going to pan out. What I do know is that Mike Hoffman is killing it right now with 17 points. Duchesne's doing very well. And that top line, I was wondering how well they'd be able to spread the wealth amongst the three of them. They've done pretty well so far. Marion Gabrick, now that he's able to stay healthy, is looking pretty good. Paggio with 10 points. Bobby Ryan with 7. As I don't know if you can hear that. You might be hearing the computer whirring more than anything. But uh, Emmy, Emmy the Wonder Dog, is dreaming. A little puppy dream. But she heard me say her name. So she just perked her ears up and now she's awake. So that's good. Anyway, let's continue on. Oh, well, nope, she's still out. You must have heard that. You must have. It's, it's kind of terrifying. But kind of adorable. At the same time. Hopefully you can hear this in the background. You ever wonder what dogs dream of? I mean, yeah, there's the song from The Hangover, What Do Tigers Dream Of? But what does Emmy dream of when she takes a little doggy snooze? Anyway, our third line is miserable, uh, to the surprise of not me. So let's, uh, let's try something different here. Let's bump up Logan Brown. We'll play him on the left. And Zach Smith, I'm sorry to say, you are being relegated to the fourth line, buddy. I am sorry to tell you this. How is Condon doing? Condon's doing well. Anderson is struggling early on this year. Like I said, though, the way we're handling this, keeping this team the same for the most part, this year is definitely about progression, as most first-year Sims are. But I'm also very intrigued as i said to see how this team does for the most part in my experiences with this game when you have a rebuilding squad again they're either hot garbage or they're really good and make the playoffs i just ran a test run with the vancouver canucks the day the sedines announced their retirement we made the playoffs in year one because of course we did we just lost 10 to nothing 
to the New York Islanders. I think that thought of potentially making the playoffs has officially come to an end. How I wish we could look at the box score. 10 to nothing. My God. Another team in limbo, though, with John Tavares. I'll be intrigued to see if he is on the free agent list. But very good timing on your part in terms of voting. If you voted for the Sens, I decided that this was going to be the series. I closed the voting before Eric Carlson took the puck out of the net in his potential last home game as a Sen. So very timely to be controlling the Ottawa Senators. Now, Mike Hoffman is having a tremendous season. And I can only imagine Duchesne and Stone also have a very high point total as well. All three of them had at least 20 points. That is tremendous. Aaron Gabrick, a very respectable 16 points, 14 for Pajot, and the 12-point tally for Bobby Ryan. Logan Brown, Dezingle, or Zingle, I, I think I'm going to say Dezingle. Deal with it. And Colin White, not exactly putting up points, but I don't really care. As Thomas Shabbat's up to a 79. I don't really care for the reason of who else am I going to call up. Really? That's not going to happen. They gave me all the ammunition I needed when they sent him down, or at least waved him in real life, to do the exact same thing. He gets to sit there. Have fun in Belleville. Because you are not an Ottawa Senator. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Not a chance. And for anyone who's like, wow, what's with the hostility towards Alex Burroughs? It must be the 2011 final. No, not really. And I've discussed this a lot on Twitch. You know, you, you can do a little bit of research, but I'll just say, you know, taunting Mike Richards by pretending to snort a line off his glove. Uh, allegedly mocking Jordan Tutu or saying something uh, about his uh, recently deceased brother. There's also another one out there. It's always, it's always, oh yeah, that's right. The, uh, the O'Sullivan, the Patrick O'Sullivan comments. For those who don't know, Patrick O'Sullivan, and you can do your own research here, but he put out a story talking about the abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. And Alex Burroughs comes out and says, I'm going to beat you like your dad did. That, that takes the cake, I'd say. So why don't I like Alex Burroughs? Despite what he's done for the community? Despite what he's done for charity. Guy's a dick. He's a dick. Now anyway, jumping back to that, you can look into all those incidents on your own and make up your own opinion about Alex Burroughs. As a man, nah. As a player, nah. He's not that good. And I'm glad his name isn't on the Stanley Cup. Now I will say, speaking of players whose names are on the Stanley Cup, Nicholas Yalmerson traded alongside Luke Shen to the Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> For James Neal and Ryan Reeves. James Neal and a first round pick to the Arizona Coyotes for Nicholas Yalmerson and Luke Shen. So I guess, and rightfully so, the Vegas Golden Knights were looking for improvements on defense, but they give up James Neal to do it. Now again, check out the roster editing extravaganza to see all the changes that were made, but I do want to look at both teams' lineups. So the Coyotes, of course, it's looking a little bit rough. The addition of James Neal is solid. You do have Clayton Keller, but from there, it's a bit rough. Perlini, Dvorak, even someone like Christian Fisher has a little bit of potential, but it's kind of rough. Also, Ronaldo and Reeves on the fourth line. I mean, if you centered them with Richardson, that would be much better instead of just dragging down Christian Dvorak. They had a defenseman to spare. I know some people are going to be like, oh, Goligoski, what the hell? Watch the video. You'll hear my explanation. Defensively, they were okay. Giving up Jalmerson, though, and then having to rely on Andrew Campbell. Interesting decision. Nick Cousins is also a healthy scratch. So there you go. Interesting call there. But now in Vegas, of course, Marc-Andre Fleury between the pipes. Defensively, they're looking a little bit better. They don't even have Luke Shen in the lineup right now. But still, Jalmerson immediately becomes their best defenseman. A strong addition there. However... You are now having to rely on someone like Oscar Lindbergh or Nosek, whoever wasn't in the lineup before. Eric Halla is now a second-line guy. Maybe even Thomas Tatar was moved up. So they had a little bit of depth there, but an interesting move 
on the part of the Vegas Golden Knights. So the Arizona Coyotes getting a bit of offensive help, surrendering a bit of defensive depth. An interesting move. Now, in my test runs of this, which of course were done on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 2 24 by the way, of course, you should know that. You should be following me by now, right? Most of you are, I feel. I mean, I, I got a pretty good uh, subs to follow ratio between YouTube and Twitch, so you guys have done well, and I appreciate that support. But in most of my test runs, the Vegas Golden Knights have been god-awful. Whether or not that changes, well, they're in dead last right now. 30, I mean, in fairness, we're the worst team in the league <laughs> at 30 points, but they're also quite bad, and there's also quite a bit of time to go. We are on January 1st. Mike Hoffman is still a point-a-game player, which is insane, really. Uh, Matt Duchesne, five goals with 26 assists, and then Mark Stone still doing all right. I feel as though we could still split them up in a way. The problem is we don't have, you know, if we consider Hoffman and Duchesne a pairing, there really isn't that guy, unless we want to say or hope that Paggio, as I'm trying to fight off a sneeze, am I going to be successful here, is the question. It's a battle of epic proportions. Oh my god, I think I won. I think I had the tiger. I'm good. <clears throat> I'm good, maybe. I don't know if Pajot and Sto uh, Stone, I was going to say Strom, I don't know if Pajo and Stone are a good enough one-two punch, so I might just leave it. We're a bad team anyway. Logan Brown, though, up to a 77, Colin White and a 73, so we are getting that little bit of decent improvement, and Thomas Shabbat up to an 80 overall, playing with Eric Carlson. That is what I was hoping for, although obviously the plus-minus there is a little bit rough, but in terms of winning, who cares? We're not about winning right now. We're pretty much, I guess, about tanking. Even though we have some decent pieces, I don't know what this team is about. But that's that's part of it. We need to find an identity for this team. And hope that Eric Carlson is a part of it. Even though we have not gotten a single offer about Carlson this entire time. No other trades, no other signings. So let's sim a little bit further. And I can only expect at this point that playoffs won't be a part of it. So I do wonder how much I'll be simming in this episode. I guess it depends on how many trade deadline day moves I make, if any. I wouldn't mind setting up the trade block to just be like, hey, it, it, you know, offer me anything and everything. However, if you do that, uh, you can risk freezing up the game for anywhere from 1 to 15 minutes. I'm not kidding. If you follow on Twitch, you know I'm not kidding. As I did that, and it took me 15 minutes to sim through two days. Because the trade block locked everything up. It was spectacular. So, I am still trying to decide on the fly here how I want to handle everything. But I'm more intrigued by the other moves that are being made. Including a move that everyone thought would happen, or at least a lot of people thought would happen, at the real deadline. Didn't happen, but it happens here, and Toronto paid a big price. Mike Green and a fourth round pick to the Leafs in favor... I was going to say in favor of. And I tried to find a way to recover. <clears throat> I couldn't recover. In return, four, is what I meant to say, a first, a second, and Carl Grundstrom. So Mike Green and a fourth for a first, second, and Carl Grundstrom. <clears throat> the Leafs are going all in. Where are they in the standings right now, you might be asking. I know I'm asking myself that. They are currently in a wild card spot, as Montreal is at least half decent, which is, of course, the healthy carry price effect. Again, not having injuries turned on is certainly uh, dictating the way this is playing out. I'm only going to sim another week here or so as the squeakiest of armchairs make their presence known. I love this chair. I'll never get rid of this chair. Does it ruin the audio quality? Yes. Does that actually bother me? Yes. But the illusion of having no standards whatsoever is one that I'm willing to uphold. As Logan Brown is up to an 80 overall in one season. 
Point total wise, it's not tremendous, but I feel like we made the right call playing Logan Brown and Colin White, Thomas Shabbat as well. So things are going all right, not in terms of winning. Holy Chalapic. Chalapic. Is it Chalapic or Chalapic? I'm going to go with Chalapic because it makes me laugh. 76 overall. Nick Paul, also a fourth line guy. Well, damn. We might be making some moves, which would probably include either trying to trade Magnus Pyarvi or just getting rid of him. Tom Pyatt I might keep because he is on a two-year deal. But I'd be all right with either outright just sending Pyarvi down because who cares? Or, you know, trying to make a deal, a little bit of a depth deal. To be honest, let me check our contracts. Is there anybody else who has an extension kicking in? Is what I want to know. Aside from Pyatt having that ridiculous contract, <clears throat> let's see, any... Any extensions kicking in? I'm not seeing any changes in salary. I think we're good. I think we are clear, which is all right. Although I meant to hit the other trigger to go down to in the system. Burroughs is still signed for an extra year, and Borowiecki does have a new contract kicking in. Right. That's a good decision. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that's not upsetting. Not one bit. Now, do I have to? hold true to that deal? Of course not. I can do what I want. But I might. Just out of spite for Pierre Dorian <laughs> and Eugene Melnick to see if I can win in spite of that god-awful contract. Now, let me see here. I mean, in fairness, the, you know, the salary isn't too bad, but still, it's pretty rough. Now, where, oh where, is Magnus Pyarvi Svensson? He dropped the Svensson, though. Is there anybody... Like Chicago, for example, who would like a nice depth player. Because I don't really care what your record is. I'm willing to take a draft pick if you're willing to move it. Is a fourth round pick too much for Mr. Pyarvi? It's not. I imagine a third round pick is too much, though. It is. So I can get a fourth round pick from Chicago for Magnus Pyarvi. And I'm going to do that. So, uh, Magnus, we'll see you later, buddy. Now, again, I'm moving him with reason, <clears throat> rather than, you know, just losing him for free. We didn't have to tell anybody else in the league that we're moving him for free. We need to call up old Chalapic here. And to be honest, I would like to get Nick Paul into the lineup. To do so, I'd probably have to send down Colin White. And I don't really like that idea, because he has progressed a little bit, although not as much as Brown. So you know what, Colin? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you down to the AHL. We'll give you some time on the top line there. and see if that helps your development a little bit more. In the meantime, let's go best lines at the NHL level. And let's go with the, the Paul, Pyatt, and Smith line. Although, Smith will be put at center. We have Dezingle, Brown, and now Chalapic. Who is the better center here? It's actually Chalapic. Not bad. And Gabbert, Pajor, Ryan, which I'm also cool with. On defense, let's reset that order. I still like Christian Wolanin on the third pairing. Minus nine with one point. 87 shots, no goals. That is just unfortunate. More than anything else, that is just unfortunate. As we need to make Colin White the top line center. And as far as the second line goes, it'll probably be Jim O'Brien as he is the highest rated player and I'm not really worried about someone like Ben Sexton or Kyle Flanagan getting into the lineup so Jim O'Brien welcome aboard however is there any yeah you know what Nick Moutry's taking your spot on that second line why not because I refuse to make Burroughs anything better than a third line player I just outright refuse <laughs> if anything I'm excited to be controlling the Ottawa Senators for the sole reason that I'm in control of Alex Burrow's destiny and I am hoping that he just retires in year one out of anger. Nothing would make me happy <laughs> just to see him walk away from the league right about now. Holy trades. Holy trades. Anaheim acquires Jeff Petrie in a fifth for Max Jones a first and a third. I said holy trades. It was only one other one, but boy was it a blockbuster. So Mike Green to Toronto 
for picks and Grundstrom, high picks. And Montreal gets Max Jones a first and a third out of Jeff Petrie. Which, I can admit, Jeff Petrie's an underrated defenseman. We've boosted that overall up a little bit. Should he have that high a value? Probably not. But I can't control value. All I can control is overall attributes and potential. Fortunately for the Montreal Canadiens, as they continue to move out certain players. Now, why did that happen? I said nothing about trading a prospect the likes of Lockwood. Or wanting a prospect the likes of Lockwood. Actually, no, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, wanting prospects and trading picks. That makes sense. Should I have taken that deal? Maybe. I'm not too concerned, though. Lockwood's low top six, as we have won four straight games. And now we get the same offer. Pittsburgh's first for a second in TBR. No. I don't care how bad Pittsburgh is or how good Pittsburgh is. I'm keeping that pick because we need a first-round pick. And offering two seconds at Cody McLeod is certainly not going to change my mind. <laughs> oh, wow, you added Cody McLeod? Yeah, I'll take that. Let's go. Although, one might argue that might be a very Ottawa thing. Backland. Backland. A first and a second for Backland. Now, again, I don't know where that Pittsburgh pick is. A Backland, or a Duchesne, Backland, Pajot center combination would be pretty nice. The question is what uh, you know, just what kind of contract is Backlund looking for? And is it worth giving up a first round pick in what is now a pretty deep first round? I'm gonna say no. But I am intrigued. I can admit that I am at least intrigued. Although, if not a little bit disappointed that we have not had a single offer for Eric Carlson. A team has not even tried, which I can't really blame them. We have other trades. Edmonton, uh, Ed Edmonton? Edmonton acquires, and I turn that into Edmonton. I am recording this after a stream and another video. Am I a little bit off kilter? Maybe. Is that even the right way to phrase it? Probably not. I'm tired. <laughs> Welcome. There, add that to the add that to the I'm tired counter. There's your first one. Edmonton have acquired, I think it's Emil Rasinen, a fourth and a fifth for Mike Camilleri and a seventh. So a decent little pickup there for the Leafs, in addition to acquiring Mike Green. The St. Louis Blues have acquired Lucas Spiza from Vegas for Scotty Upshaw and a fifth. So not too bad. Arizona moving more defensemen. Sending Alex Goligoski and Kevin Connaughton to Florida and getting perhaps a King's Ransom. Not sure what the Panthers are thinking, but it's a first round pick this year. Alexi Heponiemi and Ian McCaution. The Arizona Coyotes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just swindlers. R robbers. Just. God, poor Florida Panthers. <laughs> The poor Florida Panthers. That is all I can say. That is highway robbery at its finest. As we sim one week closer to deadline days. Devin Shore is on waivers. And we can now claim him because of Payarvi being traded. So that is tremendous. Welcome to Ottawa, University of Maine alumni. Devin Shore. That is a decent little pickup for us. And, of course, that is a nice little reason to uh, maybe move an extra bit of depth here. Seeing as it would be nice to be able to claim some players off of waivers. So, to be honest. To be honest. I'm going to say that I am willing to trade anybody under a... Let's go under a 74. I just want to see if I get offers over the next week. Under a 74, <clears throat> who is 22 years of age or older. That protects Gagne and White. Does not protect Perron and Luchuk, but that is okay. So allow me to go to the trade block. Now I am being 
oddly specific, and I might still make a trade on my own, but I'm being oddly specific to avoid the game kind of locking up again. So, surplus, we still have Carlson listed there. Forwards, anybody over the age of 22 who is, in fact, a 74 overall or lower, take our garbage is basically what I am telling the other GMs to do. I also need to take a look at the defense and the goaltending, in which case I might be receptive to basically any offer for the goaltending. However, this does kind of shut down the possibility of getting an offer for, say, Eric Carlson, but that hasn't happened yet, nor do I expect it to. So if we look at the defense, I still like Willannon. I, I like our NHL defense. Getting an offer for Cody Ceci would be nice just to move him out of here. But, you know, I'm going to say anybody... How good's Will Lannon? A 75? And, or, yeah, no, he's a 76. So anybody under a 75 is free game. Even Ben Harper, even Philly Polka, Christian Jaros, anybody under a 75 on defense is fair game. And goaltenders, send me an offer. Let's see what happens. Unless I make a deal specifically for Alex Burrows, which... You know, might not be the worst idea because Gustafson is a half-decent goaltending prospect and I'm really not interested in moving Craig Anderson right now. Where is he going to go anyway? So let's go ahead and set up the defense. Say that we want to move anybody who is under a 75 overall prospect or not. And let's set up a deal here for Captain Scumbag himself, son of a gun, that that just happened. Back to defense. That was the defense, right? Nope, that was the forward. Okay. Well, back to forward. 22. There we go. Don't I love how it does that sometimes. Back over here. I'm not sure how old Alex Burroughs is. So actually, I'm going to have to back out. Let me, uh, let me remove that one. We go back to add item. And while we don't technically have to add Burroughs to the list, I do want to see, as he is a 36-year-old, 78 overall forward. So we will go to our surplus. We will list it as just 36 years old. 36 year olds, I should say. And 78 overall. How he has retained a half-decent overall rating playing in the AHL all season, I have no idea. But that's okay. It'll work itself out. 78 overall. We will try to specifically trade Burroughs, and in return, we will take anything and everything. Just send us an offer over the next week. Hopefully that is limited enough that the game doesn't decide to just break itself. Also, I don't know if you noticed, we're listed as hopefuls now. And I feel like that's because of Logan Brown's uh, improvements, we'll say. I don't have much time to get offers here. But I did immediately get an offer. It's Nick Paul and two fourth-rounders for Edmonton's second this year. Not bad. I like Nick Paul, though. I do. Medium top nine, 22 years old, 74 overall. I kind of like Nick Paul. Is there another player that I can swap out to trade places with him here? Someone who is four overall points weaker, yet the same age, that being Nick Moutry who I forget who they acquired him from, Columbus obviously is a draft pick, who is potentially a future fourth liner himself in terms of that physical category. But if I don't move him, I'm not really sure who it would be. I feel like I should move Patrick Seeloff so he doesn't headshot another teammate in practice. What do you say, Seeloff and two-fourths for a second-round pick, Edmonton? Rejected. I'm not surprised, because they don't want Seeloff. Did they want Moutry, though? They didn't. They just want Nick Paul, which is causing me some issues. Although they also want Pyatt, so that could help. Do I want to trade Nick Paul? I kind of like Nick Paul. I want to see if he develops into anything. It seems like a absolutely go-get-it kind of trade, but I'm not entirely sure. I think I'd rather trade Seeloff, and then who else do we have unsigned? Just Nermi and the other guy. How about I also add, he's a 71, but he's 23 years old, Andrew Sturtz, who was an NCAA signing. I don't think he'll improve in time. 
how about Seeloth? The right, the right two starts and four, two fourth round picks per second rounder. Still rejected. Edmonton, Petey, buddy, PDC, Peter Chiarelli, Chiarelli, Sh -sh -sh Shia. What's happening here? How about another seventh? What do you say to that? Still no. I'm going to have to give up Nick Paul if I want the second round pick. Nick Paul and two fourths for a second rounder. And I know people are screaming right now. Just take it. It's Nick Paul. But out of common decency, I can't let Peter Shirelli feel like he's won a trade. I just can't do it. This can't be even close to even. Two fourth round picks and Nick Paul for a second. I feel like that's a bit too close to even in their favor. But you know what? Nick, buddy. Oh, buddy. I don't know. I like his eyebrows. That's all it is. I like his eyebrows. He has a Dallas Stars draft pick. Hasn't really done that well. He's an RFA this year. I, I want to keep him. Edmonton, I'm sorry. There's, there's got to be someone else. There's, is there a goaltender, perhaps? Not. I was hoping for Hogberg there because, boy, if you're familiar with my channel... You know the Hogberg situation. Let's see. I mean, Zingle hasn't done that much for me, but he might be considered a favorite. Oh, boy. I don't know. I don't know. Let's make this happen, though. Please, because I need to get rid of somebody. Let's make this happen. Should I be spending this much time on trying to not trade Nick Paul? Probably not. But we're here now, and it is what it is. I am determined that you are gonna pay you are gonna take Patrick Seeloff. I'll also give you Nurmi and Sturtz. And two fourth round picks. So you're not getting what you want, but you did come to me with this trade, and I might as well try. And they took it. Beautiful. So I get rid of pretty much a bunch of nothing. I renegotiated my way into keeping a player that I want to keep, and I got a second round pick out of it. Why does everyone want Nick Paul? That makes me want to keep him more. Also, I don't know who Chase is. I think it's Greg Chase. And no, he plays for the Springfield Thunderbirds. And that team sucks. Because it should still be my team in Portland, Maine. And it's not. So kick rocks, Florida. How dare you? Unbelievable. Everybody wants Nick Paul. My God. And I don't want Nick, uh, I don't want Wade Megan for him. So no thank you. Can't wait for the next Nick Paul offer. There it is, to Boston, a third and a sixth. Absolutely not. Out of principle, I am now keeping Nick Paul on this team. By trading Patrick Seeloff, I did what I wanted. I opened up a spot for a potential waiver claim. So this team, as it stands, I think we might be keeping it. I think we might be keeping the Ottawa Senators pretty much the same way that they are. Again, I don't have free agents to sign. I... I mean, yeah, I got some garbage I could move for some extra picks, but no, let's go, let's go down with the ship and then rise with the, a you know, rise from the ashes and with the ashes if we kick them up with our beautiful wings, in which case, maybe on fire because this is a Phoenix reference and not Arizona. They're the Arizona Coyotes now. You can't say Phoenix, so stop it. The entire city of Phoenix just doesn't exist. It's the Arizona Suns. In the University of Arizona Stadium, home of the Arizona Cardinals. Get it right. I'm not trading anybody else, is my point. I am. I feel like I am in fine form right now. The finest of forms, in fact. So with that said, because we are almost 45 minutes into the video, and we're not going to make the playoffs, I'm going to end this episode right here. This is where the journey stops for now. In the next episode, we will come back. We will sim through what is left of this season. We will go through the draft. We will go through the rest of the offseason, ideally. And we will be ready for season two by the end of next episode. We're making some quick progress here because, again, what else am I supposed to do? We're going to go down with the ship and then dig ourselves out of the mess that Pierre Dorian and Eugene Melnick have created. Or maybe I turn on over mode and I move, I turn on owner mode and I move the team to Quebec or Kansas City. 
or Atlanta for the memes, even though that'll never happen, or Houston, or Saskatoon. Shout out to Saskatoon. I hope you enjoyed this episode, even though, again, I am in fine form and very, very, very tired. If you did enjoy, you're going to want to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss what's next. No way. This is going to be great. I'm calling it. This is going to be my favorite series in NHL 18 that I run. And I've already had some pretty popular series. This is going to take the cake. How big is that cake? I don't know. Is it just a slice? Is it the whole shebang? I don't know. Make sure to leave a like on the video as well. It's greatly appreciated. Make sure you hit the little notification bell as well. Because, because, YouTube is garbage. YouTube is garbage. And whenever they feel like it, they won't tell you that I uploaded a video. So hit that notification bell. That'll help increase your chances of actually seeing this damn thing. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as well, at Tukey24. Because then, for sure, you will see when I post videos. When I go live on Twitch, follow me on Twitch at Tugi24. It's a universal name. It's a well it's a brand. My brand. Tugi24. Because I'm unoriginal. And just not creative. And I'm not good with names. Why the hell do you think I have a series right now called Rock Flag and Eagle? It's because I'm not great with names. But damn it, I have heart. Kind of. I don't know, some of the arteries might be clogged. So I have at least some partial heart and determination. Some people call it grit. But there's no sandpaper here. Except for Nick Paul. He brings the sandpaper. And Tyler Randall, but he's in the AHL, so does anyone really care? I love Tyler Randall. I wish he was still a Providence Bruin. But he's not. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Outro of the year. And it's only April. Look out, world. Setting new standards. <laughs>